Okay, so everyone, hello everybody. We're going to be looking at um, Zap today. We're going to go through the Zap tutorial for the HUD option, the manual investigation. So, sorry, if we go back onto here, so on the Zap application, uh, you'll see Automated Scan Manual Explore. So, we're going to look at the Manual Explore option today. And we're going to be going through the tutorial that is, uh, comes with the Zap uh, software. So click on there, so I'll put your target in there. This is a, a website I'm going to uh, practice against in a minute. But I, th I thought I'd quickly just nip, um, do this tutorial first. So launch the browser, you come up with a nice little um, attack HUD there, here. So obviously in real life scenario to continue the target, but today we're going to do the HUD tutorial. and it, just so we're going to go through the tutorial that explains how to use Zap manual software. It's actually quite impressive and I quite like there's lots of little features in there that help you with your pen testing. Um, I wouldn't use Zap exclusively, but it certainly helped with uh, just finding those sort of low hanging fruit and easy, easy to find vulnerabilities on our website. So it's just, just a welcome to the head. And then how this tutorial works is it gets you to f use the tool in order to find little codes um, as you move through each sort of little bit of the tutorial which is quite a nice little feature so that is a security tool therefore by, des uh, by design you are so what it's saying here is um, when you're using this tool you're essentially um, performing an attack on a website so don't use this on out, out of scope websites I only use this on websites that you have permission to as uh, attack Otherwise, you will be breaking the law. Um, this is just basically saying you can use HTTPS, but it might break and you can um, downgrade it, I think it is, if required. Um, if it breaks your application. Uh, so, one thing to mention as well so, generally, when using Zap or Verb Suite, you have to set up your HTTP or HTTPS traffic to traverse uh, those programs via, via their proxy. But the when you click on the manual um, investigation option on here, uh, Zap automatically configures the the proxy for you. So all of your internet traffic was in this browser will be going through Zap, and then Zap basically intercepts that traffic and analyzes it for known vulnerabilities and attacks and whatnot. Um, yep. So the next one. So this is talking about your frames and all your options down here. Um, it's talking about the overlays of your um, page. So click on these buttons down here, gets rid of it. Because sometimes you might have information behind these and be quite annoying to um, try and get behind them or whatnot. Okay, so go on to the next one, go on to the alerts. Um, this talks about passive and active scanning now. So, as you're going through the website, it will passively scan what you're clicking on, things like that. Active scanning will actively follow links and try and find out all the links on the um, on the website. So yeah, it says here it uses um, so passive scanning just looks at the traverse traffic, looking for potential vulnerabilities and active scan actually tries to get a response from a server this is considered an actual attack so when using this make sure you're within the scope next um, so we have uh, so look notifications so if a potential vulnerability is found on a website you'll get the notification it will appear down here uh, so if we submit you'll see a few come up at the bottom here that's right now what it's saying now as well, because it's only um, appear for a certain, a certain amount of time, you can click onto these here and you can get more information about said um, alert. And here uh, you have additional kind of information about that. This is the HTML raw format, which I think we can modify. Yeah, we can modify and reply. Um, we'll see more of that um, later on in this tutorial. Uh, this side, so this this side is specifically for the page that you're on as well, from my understanding, and this is a, for the site as a whole. So you'll find these will rack up and accumulate. These should change from page to page. 
next next button here. Uh, like we just said here, really, well, I said a minute ago, just explaining what we just touched upon. Um, site alerts. Yep. So again, site alerts, page alerts. So you've seen these have accumulated as we've gone on. And this is specifically for the page that we're on. Now we go into the history, which is down here. Here is the history uh, frame at the bottom of the page. Um, this is rather useful because, as it says here, if you say, for instance, uh, come to a page and it requests additional pages, you can click on these pages and see what their uh, see what the additional requests are. And clicking on one of these uh, requests will allow you to further investigate what the requests are up to. Um, response and then a response for so so this is quite interesting one just once I clicked on so this is a get request for tutorial CSS so if you wanted to you're going to get your response the so response as is for so whatever the content was and then here you have that have the response to data response. So if you were to modify that, you'd probably you'd be able to uh, change the uh, what you can see in the browser from that particular response. And then we go to we go to WebSockets. Uh, this is something to do with um, messages that are sent within the HTML, and you will be able to modify those messages and resend them and things like that. I haven't come across this yet, so I can't give you a good example. Um, so that builds a hierarchical. So this is clicks onto here, and you can go onto your um, sites so go into my own site and this is basically saying here's all the pages that they found and you can traverse them at will yeah, so, and then you can click on the, you can click on any of these URLs so to see the request and response for that HTURL so I know the alerts and then here we go get and then a response and then we can replay in the browser if you want to and it goes, takes us back to where we were before so let's just go back to where we were on sites, I do believe. Here we go. Then next scope. So for instance, if we wanted to add this particular website into scope, so we wanted to start an attack, it would say not in scope. So we're going to get all upset. So click on that, add scope, in scope, start, start a scan. Yes. So you see a little progress here, here as well. Now we want to stop it. Uh, stop it. Stop that. And then remove. So that's go again. So this is quite a nice little feature. So if you're pen testing a particular website, and you have multiple kind of sites. So if we here we have multiple sites. Look in my sort of cache, whatever. I can select this particular one to be in scope, and then it kind of adds another layer of protection for yourself uh, to stop you from um, attacking the wrong website by accident and getting yourself into trouble or destroying the wrong website. Come on, press the mouse button. Here goes. So this is the field I was referring to with regards to um, little tests. Um, so on here, this page has two fields on it. Now what you need to do, if you go on to, I can't remember where it was actually, where's it gone? This here. This here, um, what it does is, it shows hidden fields that have been potentially left over by the developer. Now in the actual test itself, I think it requires you to change these fields to zap. So if we do zap, 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 and then submit, it'll allow you to task completed. And maybe let's put on to the next one. But just to uh, show you that this little feature here allows you to find um, either restrictive fields or um, in this one, the next one, it is hidden fields. So next show, come on now. It's a bit buggy. This is just me. Show sure, here you go. So same again. So see this is how the web page looks, but if you see this little light bulb here, it's found some hidden fields and it's enabled those fields by doing this. So if we change the order zap again, I think that's what you required. Zap, zap, zap. And there we go, task complete. Next. Then here again is what it allows. So some browsers within the H 
CML form will restrict um, some kind of um, how much input you can have. So in there you can you can only input numbers from one to one hundred. But if you were inter to intercept that request, you could change this value to whatever you wanted to. So for instance, what they want us to do here is to intercept the request we're going to send here and then add it and add it to um, or change the value. So traditionally what you'd have to do is open up Burpsby or Zap and then do it um, that way. But this is, this is done like a little bit of a shortcut and it's easy way to do that. So I think what it wants to do is replay the attack uh, or break. Okay, it wants us to intercept it. So okay, so break. Okay, we send that in like that. Nice. And then now this is the intercepted request. So this hasn't actually sent it to the server yet. It's just intercepted uh, for us. So it's gone from our browser. Now it's in our proxy. This is our proxy. So now what we're going to do, this, I'm going to go zap, and I go continue, and now, boom, task completed. Now, if I was to leave that break off, so it's not in, it's not going to intercept it, that would say, please select a value, it's not more than 100. But if I break now, that's, that's, that means send it, to our, uh, send it to our intercept, and go boom, and then we can go 1,000, just to prove I'm not lying, 1,000, and it works. Okay. But in this instance, they, they want us to just put the word zap in there so we can go five, submit, oh damn, we'll put that back on, five, submit, and then zap, continue, boom, we're in, task completed, next. And let's do the replay, uh, re uh, replay. so go to the history, and it wants us to do, which one was it, let's have a little look. Okay, there's no task attached to this one, but I think from what it is, what it's asking you to do is go into your history, replay and browser, and then look for well, any one of these, and then we go to tutorial for instance, and I can replay in console or replay in browsers so that will resend the request with my modifications if I choose to make a modification. Um, yeah, so it's to get a request to that, and if I wanted to send it to another browser, another machine for instance, I could modify that to change it and it would go to, I wouldn't receive a reply because then the server would craft a packet as this being the response but anyway next uh, two spiders so traditional spider um, just follows URLs uh, links to map the uh, website um, and then we have the Ajax spider which um, allows you to use uh, follow JavaScript uh, links as well. There's the two differences between Spider. So they both crawl. They both crawl the website, trying to find following all the links on the website that are within the scope, because obviously you've had it in the scope. And then, so this one's just standard links, and this is to do with um, a URL, uh, not URL, um, JavaScript links, because this one can't handle JavaScript links. So those are your two differences there. Active scan uh, uses so we touched upon this at the beginning. Um, searches for well-known vulnerabilities basically on a website. So finding that low-hanging fruit and a fast way to enumerate a website. Now it isn't extent. It isn't um, going to find everything. It's just going to find the easy ones. But if you're in a rush, you know, it's something. Is it is it is very useful. So let's have a little read of that before I crack. So as it says in here, the active scan. Um, we'll only be able to attack website web pages that have uh, been found so it's probably best to crawl the website first using both of these and then start the active attack you can't attack uh, web pages that hasn't been that haven't been discovered yet so it doesn't do any kind of initial discovery then attack it is just these are the ones I know about I'm going to check the ones I know about from the database from the uh, output of these two okay, attack mode okay look a lot Okay, so this one is that one here. So it's a set, it's very similar to active scanning, but instead of um, scanning the website, you just leave that on, and then when you discover a new web page, it will automatically attack that web that web page. And whilst you're all rooting around doing your own thing, you can then look at the findings from the attack uh, mode, and then find out what you may have missed or any kind of low hanging fruit and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So tool configuration, um, I've already added it, but if I reset it here, reset configuration default, 
Okay, that didn't work. I thought I was going to do some stuff. Well, basically, you should have two little plus signs down here, and if you click on those, you'll be able to add these features just here. It's up to you whether you do that or not. I do that or not. I would certainly um, um, I would certainly recommend it. Okay, next is comments. So comments is actually quite useful. So um, generally, when you're looking at um, web pages, you'll inevitably go to view source. And you'll have this source of the current web page you're looking at. Um, but as a pen tester, what you'll sometimes do is you'll look for um, comments uh, left by the developer. So it says, so if we get rid of the view source bit, we can look at, see what it says here. So if I click open on that, oh no, hover over it, it says, this is another example of a comment containing suspicious PWD uh, present working directory string. And then here, if I put a tutorial, so it basically finds suspicious sort of flags within the view source and it will present it to the hacker. So that's quite a nice little thing. So also it doesn't I wouldn't say it's exclusive, but I certainly would um not um, fully kind of reliable, but it's a nice little kind of okay. We found these obvious ones. Have a little look see. So oh, blue source, blue page uh, source. Um, so where can we find that now? So here you go. This is an example of a comment. Okay. So you can find that. Yes, we had a little look see at the view source and it's basically picked out this here and it has the comment present working directory in it, which is an example of what it's looking for up here. So that's good. So things like that will be for SQL, that'll be for your present working directory, password, password, user, admin, database, query, don't know what that is. Um, so that'll be some sort of maybe partial uh, bit of a password bug, which is good. Oh, that's very good as well. So it means that that's what I was looking for in these little comment sections. So also what I found in here as well, call in that there as well. So if you were able to modify that, you could change the image on the on the website. Oh dear, well done. There you go. Yeah. So toggle script. Um, these are. I haven't found a use for these yet. I've only been using this app for about, well, this version of this app not very long. Um, it's just to automate certain uh, processes on Zap, I believe. Um, so if you want to find out more information about this, I suggest you go to this link here and it will tell you all about the different scripts that have already been created by other users that you can incorporate into your own um, testing. Uh, this is the little report tool here, which is rather good. Good for generating reports and things. So you like a complete rundown of uh, your attack. Health configuration down here. It's a bit self-explanatory, to be honest with you. I'm not going to go through that. Uh, yeah, and a complete tutorial. Okay, well, I hope it's uh, done. Come on. I hope that was a little bit of use to you. It's only a quick run through of what this um, tool manual thing of uh, that can do. So I'm going to crack on and get on with my own testing now. So I hope that's of use to you again. So yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye.